now coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's the one, the only, Puckle Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Puckle Podcast. I am your host, Trainer Thatch, here today with some spectacular co-hosts. We've got the uh, early morning Mark. Oh, hi. And of course, we've got uh, the wonderful, as always, Shark Finnegan. Hello! Uh, and we're here to bring you another wonderful episode of the Puckle Podcast. Puckle, of course, standing for the Pokemon Underground Champions League, a nonsensical name we came up with in 2007, where we talk everything Pokemon from the trading card game to the video game to everything in between. And I, no, this isn't in between it. This is a video game. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's a all lot of video a different game. video games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I miss talking about the in between stuff, but. <laughs> Because, like, my life has been trading card game, like, competitively for a little while. Mostly because I, I don't know, like, not, the problem is Seth got me back into it after I got money, like, adult yeah. money. And so I could, oh, yeah. like, afford to go get Pokemon cards. And pretty much, like, mm. any Pokemon card I want. Good. Yeah, then being an adult is great, isn't it? Yeah, I know, right? Uh, when I was in grad school and I wasn't making real people money, like, I would only play, like, super budget decks. Mm-hmm. And so, like, that was way back in the day. That would that would be, like, well, I say way back in the day, but it was, like, end of XY era, early Sun Moon era I was playing. Mm-hmm. And so, like, breaks were a big thing, which was kind of cool. That was that was a lot of fun to play around with, because, like, the Greninja break deck was actually pretty cheap uh, at the time. And then you had, I think that was the most expensive deck I ever built was the Greninja break deck, and I think I spent, like, 40 bucks on it, maybe. Mm. And then... There was, uh, we had ended up pooling like a couple shamans, which made our lives way nice. Cause way back in the day, kids, there was a card called shaman that was almost required to be competitive in the Pokemon TCG, uh, the shaman EX. And it used to cost $50 for one card, but you'd want to probably play four of them in every deck. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> it was bad. Yeah. They've had some print issues with some of the, like the, uh, newer sets where like the pool rates are really bad like in evolving skies and stuff the ones with like all the evolutions people want the pull rates aren't as great as they would want them to be so the same thing happened with another set it back then called evolving skies or not evolving evolving skies is the one that just came out it was called roaring skies back then <laughs> oh yeah yeah i i remember the roaring skies commercial the freaking jigglypuff <laughs> or igglypuff they had um what is it called they had pull rate issues as well there and so it was like oh, yeah. really hard to get these shaman exes which helped, you know, skyrocket the price. And Pokemon is surprisingly pretty good about reading the meta, and they're they're doing actually really well now, for the most part, um, where, like, if they see a card that's, like, exploding in popularity, right now we'll get what's called, like, a V battle deck, uh, or oh, a, league yeah. battle de- a league battle deck. Like, we just got the Mew one back in November, um, and that is, like, mostly a playable deck for, like, 30 bucks. Mm-hmm. And Oh, that's nice. Yeah, you, you need, like, a couple more cards to, like, make it truly... Like it's full form, but it, yeah, for like for like forty bucks, you could have the deck that won regionals last week, you know, <laughs> or two weeks ago. Yeah, and I think isn't uh, Cal- I think I saw that there was a Calyrex Ice one out right now or something. Maybe I missed. Uh, it's not Calyrex Ice Rider right now. They had one a while ago. Uh, there was a Calyrex oh, okay. Ice Rider. Maybe one. it's the older one I saw. The one that just remember. came out was Palkia. Oh, Palk, yeah, that's what it was. I knew it was a water, like yeah. a legend water. And I, I mean, that's still pretty, I think, at least in and out of the meta, but it's still up there. Palky is like more on the edge. Like I would say it's more of like a tier two, three deck right now. But mm-hmm. I think with the new set, it might see a resurgence. All uh, right. With the new set, I mean, not the new deck, uh, the new set, because mm-hmm. we get like the Chi and Pow EX, which just like lets you grab two energy from your deck at any point. Mm-hmm. And that really helps out. That really helps out uh, Palkia. And if you can find it with Irida, like, it, it just gets really nasty. So, like, oh, I yeah, think we yeah. might see a resurgence. And it might even see play later on. There's a there's this really cool Blastoise EX coming out that's actually going to be pretty good. Oh, is it the from the Japanese set? Or is it from the, from yes. the little... Uh... It's in the Japanese set that's coming out. Every year, the TCG... And I'm sorry to turn this into TCG talk, listeners. But... <laughs> but... Every year in the TCG, they there's usually four sets, 
And then there's usually like a fifth set that is kind of like this extra bonus one because you can't go buy packs of it, right? You have to go buy like a box with packs in it. Mm -hmm. And one of those sets like right now is um, Crown Zenith. Like that's the latest example of that. Pokemon Go was another one of those. And so they're going to come out with another set. It's uh, all about the original 151 Pokemon, which feels like we're beating a dead horse now because I feel like almost every other year now we get a set that's just about the original 151. (laughs) <laughs> and like pokemon go kind of felt that way because it was mostly og pokemon that were in it mm-hmm. and it was uh it was a time uh <laughs> it was a time yeah i don't oh, know it's getting that black oh god that blastoise is gross that blastoise is actually really good and you could probably wombo combo it with the palkia yeah i'd scream yeah no i i Turning it a yeah. little bit back to some Puckle stuff, I was competing in the or in the TCG tournament mm-hmm. we're having, and uh, I'm now one in three. Oh, you know my you play we because we played yeah, we each played, other. I think yeah. week two. You know I yeah. I'm just running the same deck. Yeah. So my matchup is eh versus Arc because uh, I'm running Arcanine EX. Yeah. Because that was just the first deck I played on TCG Live, and I'm like I I like this deck. It's like when it runs, it's consistent. So when, when it doesn't brick, it's good. A hundred uh, seventy yeah, percent it, of the time, it works a hundred percent of the time. And like really, like honestly, it's bricked more the past like three weeks than it has ever. Like it had <laughs> like because usually within like two three turns, I get you know I get Inte out, I get Arcanine out, I get Bibarel or Armorage out to be able to feel that engine of being able to do stuff. Yeah. But my deck doesn't really KO Arceus VMAX consistently. Oh, that 280 yeah. is always a, an issue. You need but more then, choice belts. Yeah, I think I'd probably need to throw in more choice belts. I have the one, I have a one-off in it, so I just haven't tweaked it. I probably need to throw another one in there. Yeah, but I can yeah, see my de- uh But this last week, you know, one and two, trying to survive, and... uh it was a it was a Palkia Calyrex deck. Ah, uh. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh, oh god, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, I I lost it, I lost it on the word go, but still, I I like I was at least decently competitive first game despite the f- disadvantage. But when we played, I was actually surprised at how well that ran. Like that ran better than I thought it would. Right, because in my mind, my, in my mind, it's just like a pile of fire type po- Pokemon, and the way it ran, it was more consistent than I expected. It, yeah, right. It's really consistent. It's just like because Entei at least is a good starter mon to at least you know be able to draw you cards oh, yeah. to at least ensure that you get you know get the professor's research to refuel everything. I mean, you look at uh, you look at just like any of the Maridon decks out there right now. They're doing the same thing with the Raikou, right? Like, mm-hmm. so the Raikou and the Entei are essentially the same thing. Exactly. They help at least get you that early game, get you set up, and then you can be able yep. to position out your big beater that you want to yeah. use, and then just go from go to town. Yeah. What about you, Mark? You been up to anything? I know we were talking TCG, so, Ooh. like, it's hard to be like, man, I really like cardboard. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a little hard for me to have that conversation at this yeah, time. Yeah, I know, um... I know. Until we, until we like... Bring you into the cult. Indoctrinate right? you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't, you know, honestly, recently, well, and I guess it's today's topic, just been waiting for home to happen so I can start engaging with the game again. Yeah, I had nose surgery last week, so it kind of laid me up for a while. Oh, no. And, Are you okay? Uh, Everything good? No, I'm I'm actually doing pretty good. Uh, good it was good. good to get a break, though, because if, I'm, I don't know if you guys know this. I've been just going crazy with gardening and landscaping this year. No, and I did not so know that, get, actually. Oh, okay. Well, I think I uh, remember seeing some of the stuff in the Discord. Shout out. Oh, yeah, yeah, Puckle yeah. Discord. I, I think TBG and I were uh, sharing flower pictures on there. But, uh, <laughs> He actually does, he does like a cool bunch of masonry for fun, which is actually really oh, cool. What does he? Yeah. Oh, well, not for that. fun. No. I think he does it for a living, but. Oh, okay. But I think then it comes yeah, back no, home. It was, <laughs> um, so I, it was a good chance for me to stop working outside. The doctor was like, you cannot do more digging. Please don't. <laughs> so uh, it gave me a chance to just like not go out, you know. It's like that's been a lot of my like spare time lately. It's been going out and I've been like removing my lawn out front for the most part. Putting in flower that. beds, yeah, and just kind of making the place more enjoyable. So, yeah, I've just been working on that quite a bit. 
I planted in the backyard. Well, we had two big trees that got removed in this early spring. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've been like going nuts trying to like plant native plants back there and make a little pathway. And it's just been a lot of work. <laughs> so it's nice to actually play Pokemon again. So I'm really I'd... glad home finally happened. Yeah, it's going to be really fun for, like, OU and stuff, too. Yeah, oh, I yeah. think there's some good options. Yeah, yeah, there will definitely be a tiny bit of, like, touching on that. I know next week, I know Seth got is probably biting at the, the lip here just to be able to tell so much that's going on right now. It's it's actually really exciting right now. I think we're doing TCG this time. I think it's TCG week Ooh. next week. Is it TCG or is it... I'll double... Let me double check. Please I double thought it check was for me. OU. Please don't yeah, check. We'll let me. you if it's, <laughs> if it's if it is TCG, then I will tell you everything <laughs> about OU. If not, I'll save some of that for next week. Yeah, because TCG is uh I thought it was TCG because we have the new set coming out literally next week. So it'd be timely. So it'd be timely. That's what I that thought. It would be timely. Yeah. Maybe I should force it to be the other one. But yeah. All right. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> well, well, well we'll wrap it up here anyway. Yeah, we'll I'll- wrap it up, yeah. Wait, really quick. I yeah. just want to I want to I want to call out the fact that we guys we finally did it. What do this we do? This is the Shark and Mark episode we've been talking about for like 7 Oh my months. gosh, it is the Shark yes. and Mark episode. Yes. Mark and, so shark and Mark in the morning. We've been wanting to do a collab <laughs> here for like 7 or 8 months, I think. I think it was like yeah. all the way back in It's all, that has been a joke. That's true. It has been and we've been trying to get it to yeah. happen. Yeah, cuz there was the ill-fated April Fools episode. It's so weird because we all talk all the time together, and so it's really weird to realize, like, oh, there hasn't been, like, a published show with this combination of people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. All right. Anyways. <laughs> yep. That, that's, that's a good thing to point out. Uh, on that note, though, mm-hmm. we do have some news to talk about, so let's cue that epic music. <laughs> Welcome to the news. There's news things. Uh, Pokemon shirts at Original Stitch are no longer going to be available come June 12th. The uh, store, no. the website itself is like crashing like crazy because everybody wants to get their shirts now. I feel like it's one of those purchases that everybody's just kind of put off because of the price point. Yes. And so mm-hmm. now there's a flood, yeah. right? Because like the price point is kind of nutsos. Um, it is like, it's like a hundred something dollars for a shirt, which it is a nice shirt as an owner of one said shirt. Uh, I may try to go get a second one. Uh, no, we'll see. Give, give us a chance. The people who don't have any yet. I mean, go, <laughs> I, I'm right. giving you a chance right now. Uh, yeah. Original stitch is uh, shutting down though, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah. I, I kind of hope they find something else like this because it's a really cool idea. It's very similar to like the sitting cutie idea. Mm-hmm. where uh, like every pokemon's available and maybe they can take the pokemon themselves can take those designs and then work with somebody else to do it again um oh. original stitch is also a weird site to do it with because it is japanese based um so oh, it you, is yeah so if you buy the shirts the sizes are in the japanese sizing not Ooh, in the u.s okay. sizing um which there is a difference like a large in japan is like a medium in america or oh yeah no a thousand percent so just like a heads up, if you plan on doing that, it is a nice shirt though. Owning one, it is a very nice shirt. I really like it. The fabric is really nice. All right. Uh, if you're planning to go to Worlds as a spectator, you have to apply by June seventh uh, to be able to get into the little lottery to be able to get your spectator pass. That's the Wednesday after oh, release yeah. of this show. Hmm. Yeah. This is kind of like uh, I, I'm very unsurprised based on the fact that this is Japan. <laughs> Japan does this kind of stuff a lot where they just, like, have you go into a lottery. Like, especially if you pay attention, once again, to the TCG, they have, like, a lot of cool products that come out, but there's only X number of products, and so what you do is you have to sign up for a lottery in a chance to get one. Like, you have to sign up for a lottery for the chance to buy a thing, which is kind of insane to think about. So, worlds being in Japan, this makes sense. Yep, it at least feels like you're not, like, punished for, you know, waiting or whatnot, but then it's like, well, what if I never even had a chance to begin with? And especially, it's international cha- travel, and if you're in the U.S., right, like, you've got two months, right, mm-hmm. before that happens, and you got to plan international travel. Uh, the seats on the, the seat choice on those planes is not going to be good. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. It is not going to be good. As someone who is going to Japan, I, well, I planned my trip to Japan already for this year, in uh, October. 
Oh, yep. You were already yeah. set. So. Yeah, I'm going... Well, because I'm not going to Pokemon Worlds. I, I'm just like, what's the... One, if I'm in Japan, I'm going to do something different than what I can do in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> uh, right? Because, like, NAIC is pretty close to Worlds. Oh, right. Uh, Mark, you get the next two. You get to be lucky. Yay. So, speaking of that, on August 10th, there will be a free live stream concert the day before Worlds. Do we have details for this concert at all? Or is it just I think like- it's supposed to be, like, orchestral music type. Okay. That's fair. That's that's a reasonable cut. Co- I just didn't know yeah. if it was going to be like randomly Post Malone sings a Hootie and the Blowfish oh, cover. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like that, that's what I'm worried about. Also, uh, moving on to Scarlet and Violet news. Um, hey, Pokemon Home successfully released. Uh, Yay. The move set stuff is regulated um, so that you um, you can learn what uh, game you're transferring to. Uh, so Scald remains, <laughs> whoever wrote this says Scald remains very limited in SV as right now. Good. Um, yeah. So yeah, actually I there's that good quite though. a bit messing around that there's a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff that's pretty limited at the moment. They, um, I kind of enjoy like the quote unquote move reset, if that makes sense. Yeah. Cause like mm-hmm. the thing that was getting really bad and I mean, I think it's actually really obvious in something like let's go Pikachu, um, of all places is that uh, every Pokemon used to get access to, like, Toxic. Oh, yeah. And yep. it, every Pokemon doesn't need access to Toxic. We don't need to make it possible so every Pokemon could be, like, the stalliest Pokemon of all time. But why not? Uh, mm-hmm. Because I think it makes play less fun, if that makes sense. I don't know. I Because then each but Pokemon... can bring whatever to be a Stallmon. That'd be great. It's, <laughs> it's meh, in my opinion, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, you have other things as well, whatchamacallit. I, I think uh, at a like higher that. level, it makes things like Landorus the best counter for Landorus. Oh, shit. Um, so it loses some other moves. It doesn't get... Yeah. It, you can use Hidden Power to... Hidden Power Ice against your other Landorus. No, but you uh, get They can't Terra. use Defogs. Get... Defogs are gone. Good. Then just, like, <laughs> as it Stealth be. Rock, Defog, U-Turn. As it should be. Hey, that's all you need in life. Mm-hmm. I mean... No, I, I, like I said, I've noticed that quite a bit, um, just messing around because there was, you know, just sort of rebuilding, uh, move sets for some of the mods that I moved over. I guess this is probably getting into our topic. Yeah, but, I've got, I've got uh, a lot of comments <laughs> about this for our topic today. Anyways, uh, <laughs> maybe like we should I, stop there. I, I, I have a lot to talk about in terms of our topic today when it comes okay. to these things because I have, mm-hmm. I have some opinions that make me both feel icky and not icky. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's a mixed it's a mixed bag for sure. Yeah. So all right. Ew. Yeah. Uh, who's next? Is it me? Oh, Regulation Ew. D has been announced for VGC, um, and it's going to run from July through September, leading to a speculation that the DLC will probably release in September, uh, because then we'll get new months, and then we'll get Regulation E. Um, all probably. non-restricted transfer Pokemon will be legal. Uh, so it is a pay-to-win scenario now. Yay. <laughs> Walking Wake and Iron Leaves remain banned alongside the Box Legends and Mythicals. Also see Summer League. That's true. I guess we could do that for Summer League. I haven't even thought about Summer League. Um, I don't think we've been doing any recruitment for that or anything. Uh, well, I think we're, we're still, yeah. Well, I think really. it's still early stage, but I guess this is a little teaser of what's yeah. probably to come. Yep. So Absolutely. <laughs> keep, uh, join the Discord. Get yourself yeah, join ready. The Discord. Yeah, have fun. Yeah. It's probably going to be doubles. <laughs> prepare for doubles uh all right uh yeah you get the next one shark all right so with the home drop uh smogon hat and showdown have been updated to have the new mons and within 25 hours the first ban happened which was regieleki yep because yeah. fun fact giving regieleki another coverage move to deal with ground types mm. is a bad idea what? <laughs> what? Yeah, no. It it's completely unsurprising. It went as fast as it did, but yeah, that yeah, with that, and plus you could sub as well, defense oh. like to scout. So like, oh, you bring in your Landorus and you Terra Water. You sub in front of it, so you know it's oh, it's Terra Water. Now I can just bolt forever. Cool. You know, it's that cool. kind of defensive strategy. It's like ooh, yeah, no. Thanks, so, guys. Yeah. So yeah, no, that's uh, completely unsurprising. Um, yeah, it's... but yeah, 
Magirna is, ne- is likely the next one because, fun fact, Shock. there are not many fairies. Shock. And Magirna is leaps and bounds better than everything else. Yeah. Magirna. Turns out that Steel Fairy success. is one of the best types. Mm hmm. Who yeah, would have thought? Right. And when it can do <laughs> everything good, it's a problem. <laughs> Trick room. Stored power. Rusted sword and rusted shield are in the in the game, right? For Zasha and yep. Zama Zama. Uh, yes, yeah, you do get are. to yeah. yes, both Zamas uh both Zamas are in OU right now, which yep. are on the radar. Oh yeah. Of course. Uh, <laughs> they're they're not as bad though as like Zashin. So like They're not as bad, but the fact is now they've got body press. I'm well, which it should have had the entire time. But that's it like, should have had the other time. <laughs> It, 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 it's uh, shocking that it's not until Gen 9 that it got it. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'm absolutely shocked that that's the case. So, yeah. All right. Well, moving on. Uh, if people care, there's a mystery gift for a Bronzong because of the Japan, Japan Nationals that took place uh, this coming week. or Well, it's taking place this coming weekend. Uh, the code's probably going to go live on Friday or something like that. Why Bronzong? What's, uh, probably what's because it was on somebody's team. Oh and yeah, they did well yeah, with we, it. Uh, that was usually how it goes, right? That's just how it mm-hmm. goes. And it's always just like a random Pokemon from their team, not like the one that's just like this is the one that helped me win. It's just like we right. picked. Well, there was we- a, the Palafin was one that won. I think the Garganical that was released before was one, but yeah, a Bronzong. Yeah, no, that seems a little out there. Yeah, I think they like literally just. I I swear they just roll a six sided die, and they, they go. Should have picked that's the, the actually. One. Why did they put Fluttermane? Fluttermane's the one, the the landers yeah, right. of uh, VGC at the moment, right? No, we can't. We can't level the playing field. All right. Um, also, <laughs> Leafeon releases in Unite on June eighth. So, yay! Mm. Um, okay, Pokemon Go. Shark said he wanted to talk about this. I figure right. I could speed through this one pretty quickly for everybody. Uh, yeah. So now it's June first, new season. Uh, it is the season of hidden gems. Uh, in the okay. trailer, you've got Carbink uh, teased as well as a few other things, but... Is Carbink not already in the game? No. Nope. Uh, no. Well, it is now. Well, well not in Pokemon Go, no. Uh, it just not got added. I, I swore it po- was. It's in Pokemon it's... Home. It's one of the Pokemon Home transferable Pokemon. It is one it of the is. Pokemon it Home transferable there. ones. Yeah, that's but... true. But no, it's not in. It, it has not come to go yet. It's one of the few. I think one. I mean, there's still quite Gen a few six Gen Six Mons that aren't in there. I think, but which Harvey, is super weird. No, well, Pokemon Go. New. Pokemon Go has just stopped caring what gen they're on. I think. Right. Um, yeah. They, they, they're just releasing whenever and whatever just, they want because they've got it. One, they've got to confuse us. Uh, because if not, we'll notice that they're almost out of new content to add to the game, and uh, because they're very close, right? Like Gen Seven's out. A lot of it is, at mm. least. Uh, they're almost done with Gen 6. It, we did just finally get Kecleon to finish Gen yeah, 3. Yeah, we got Kecleon, That's so true. Gen 3 is done. That's officially yeah. done. Gen 4, we're missing Fion, yeah. Manaphy, and Arceus. Yep. Uh, I think we actually oh, got yeah. all Gen 5. Yeah. Uh, we're very do close. We? I, thought I think still we do. I, we might have them all. I think except... Actually, I think the, I think the problem them. for a lot of people is that the monkeys are regionals. Yeah, I so think like it's just, I'll say regionals been, is a thing. Yeah, they've I mean, been letting the those be available in events pretty regularly, though. Yeah, a re- regionals are the only thing that make me go, I don't like this. Um, I, I, I prefer... Mean, I kind of th- like it, but it, I, I kind of nice like you could trade with people that aren't right next to you. That, and I think it would also be really cool. I don't know, like, they did a really cool thing with uh, Zangoose and Saviper early on. Where you know they those are regionals, fun fact, Sangus and Surviper. Um mm-hmm. and what they did was when they first came out, there was like a three week period where like they were swapped and then they swapped mm-hmm. them back. And then they swapped yeah. them to what it is now. Yeah, and I think they, they'll they still uh, there's a few regionals a they'll do that with. Lunatone right. and Soul Rock, they literally switch every yeah. summer like solstice, lunar solstice. Yeah, I right. wish they I wish we would get more like that, like where the regionals would rotate more frequently. Mm-hmm. I agree. I will say this though, I made an effort to get which one 
was the the grass monkey in Korea oh. when I was there. Yep. And I, then it became available like the next uh, month after I got home. Oh yeah, was, like, because really? of Go it was Go yeah. or uh, yeah. Go Fest, excuse me. Which yeah. that yeah. is happening. They have announced those. I think. Uh, uh, I think the, they're you can buy uh, the tickets New York if you want. It's like August. Yeah, I don't want to go to the physical event for no, so many reasons. God, no. <laughs> yeah. I still I mean, remember the first cool, one. It looks cool, but I understand. <laughs> like, I wouldn't. I don't know. I'm I'm not going to waste my time for something like that. I know that there are people who like doing it. I know there's some great people in our community who are really into it, but I just, mm, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to travel for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. What else we got? Uh, uh all right. Um this week we're going to have the first of well uh, technically today is the first event but uh the yes. Saturday the day of recording which actually you get like research to get like shiny gold pokemon like Caterpie and Magikarp. Mm-hmm. Oh right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh the big the actual long running one uh water festival uh, Beach Week mm. runs from June 6th through the 12th, which introduces Sandy Gast and Shiny Clauncher. Cool. Yeah. And they're, yeah, so a bunch of cool water types. And they're even during the, uh, the little like one hour Tuesday, uh, evening time frame where they do just that like mini community day. They have mm. like four water types that are just going in that time, which is kind of cool. Yeah. That's like, yeah, that's, that's different. Cool. But that'll yeah. be good. And then Community Day, uh, June 10th, and it's going to be Axew with Breaking Swipe as it's sig- uh, as the move. Cool. So Yeah. All right. I'll probably catch some of those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, if I, rem- actually, if I remember. Yeah. yeah actually, remember. though, Axew's like, oh, that's not bad. That's a, that's a hard to a get one. one. Axew's a yeah. good one. Axew's always good to have. Exactly. Yeah. They- the problem is I have is it's, they always run these like when I'm doing things. So sometimes I'll log yeah. in with like, oh, there's like a million of these surrounding me right now. <laughs> I miss yeah. when I miss when community days were six hours long. Just because I miss it too. It like I don't understand I understand like them doing all of their raid stuff where they're just like, oh, we're limiting raids so you go outside. I don't think that ru- like limiting community day times prevents me from going places and going outside. If anything, right. it uh, helps you do more. In fact, I think it inhibits that, right? Because I go, I don't want to go stress out for three hours trying to catch things. Six hours, I go, yeah, I can go catch things. Like, right? Um, and it'll be also, fun. We have plans on weekends. Let's, yeah, yeah, let's that's be flexible. <laughs> yeah, I just like a little bit more. Like, would be fine. Or even if they just like ran it from two to five p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. Oh yeah, that'd mm-hmm. be nice. Yeah, because a big thing for me was my wife for a while was working Saturdays and she wouldn't get done with work until two o'clock. Or two thirty, mm-hmm. so like then it's just like oh well we just eat ate through like the first hour of community day, so mm-hmm. is there even a point to like try to drive somewhere and go play at like a park or something? And the answer is like not really. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we just never would never do it. So I don't know. I Pokemon Go just fix it, make it better, uh, make yes. it better. Yeah. Um, and then last piece of news for you, Mark. I think we've already said it though. Yeah, yeah, I like how you give me the TCG news. Yeah, um, you like it. You like the card. <laughs> yeah, you uh, love I, the I know TCG. anything about what's going on. Um, Paldea Evolved releases this week. That's Hooray. the new set. That's the new second set in the Scarlet and Violet block. Um, yeah. It's yeah. got some cool goodies in it. I The thing is, like, I've seen a lot of... So, usually the meta changes a lot once it hits the West. Um, but there's usually, like, a preview of, like... Because Japan's had this set for, like, a month or two now. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a, usually get a preview of the meta by watching their events, and all the only difference I've seen really in the meta is that people took Judge out of their decks and they put in Ayano, which is a trainer card, um, reminiscent uh, mm-hmm. of N back in the day. Um, N for those of you who never played the TCG was a really good disruption card because you play it and then both players shuffle their hands into their deck and they draw cards up to the number of prize cards they have remaining. So if your oh, opponent only has one prize card left, you can like get them down to one card in hand. Oh yeah, that's yeah. way better than Judge. I'll say yeah. that because Judge f's me up whenever it. Yeah, well, comes Judge, around. you can still like with Judge, you can still get the card into your hand as well, uh, mm-hmm. right? Like if it was in your hand, it could come back because you're shuffling your hand. Um, Ayano doesn't shuffle the cards into your deck. Oh shoot, you're right. Oh, that's even worse. Oh god, all of you put your hand on the bottom of your deck. Uh, so that, and then draw from the top of the deck. So the cards in your hands are probably not available to you. Um, mm-hmm. 
So it usually it's, uh, always happens after I like tutor for something or like ultra yeah, ball exactly. just because I needed to discard something and yep yeah yeah no, I no. completely understand yeah it's uh yeah Iano is <laughs> gonna be a nasty card uh when it comes out this week so definitely watch out for Iano mm-hmm. friends uh, watch out for Iano I am waiting to see what the price of the uh, alternate art for that card does um because yeah. it was ridiculous it broke Japan. Uh, oh yeah, really no, bad. it was. I saw some of the funny stuff that happened. Yeah, it was from nuts. that. Let's see. Out of curiosity, is that we have a price already on TCG? There's probably a price. For, what's the price on TCG Player right now for the ultimate? All right. For that? Uh, regular is 188. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's then gonna you have go down another like listing pennies. of 64, and then uh, the special one is 174. Yeah. Oh, that's not. That's okay. So it's gonna drop. Even more than because the set hasn't officially released yet. We'll yeah. be good. Once the set re- officially releases, like I would never buy a card. I try not to buy singles from a new set until at least the Monday after the new set comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just like Thatch's rule of thumb. Um, and if you do that, I, because most cards will at least drop by half. Um, yeah. Like especially the big, the big ones like that Iano, because right now there's just a lot of hype surrounding it. And if it comes out in the U.S., I can see it being like 90, like once it settles. Oh, yeah, I think so. Right now, the listings are between 174 yeah. and 474. Now, for those well, of you, actually, home, no, there's another high one. But yeah, for those of you, this isn't like the uh, this isn't like the pl- like what you need to play the game. The version that you need to play the game is probably going to end up being about a quarter. Uh, yeah, it's a dollar eighty-eight right now. And yeah, it, it's yeah, gonna be that's a going to drop because that's people gonna are going like to rock. open. Yeah, it's going to drop like a yeah. rock, so don't worry about it. Uh, but yes, Puckle's Pokey Prediction. Do you think our next news drop for the DLC will be before, during, or after NAIC? Um, NAIC, uh, for those of you at home, is in like four weeks. Um, yeah, I think it's like, they, it's literally, just for the sake of also going, touching back to the regulation D news, it is literally the weekend it would have been legal. So yes. I think NAIC will be regulation C but not D. Yeah. Yes. So, because I think it starts yeah. on Friday anyway, so it would probably be regulation D, uh, but the, C, I, yeah, so, the DLC yeah. drop though. Will the DLC news drop come before that in June? I think uh, it might I actually be that. at NAIC. It, it, there's a good it chance might be there. Yeah. There's a good chance only because it's coming out later than usual. If it wasn't come, if they hadn't already confirmed that it was coming out later than the last DLC did in this cycle, I would be like, no, it's gonna. We're gonna get news like this week. Yeah, um, because because they used to do that. They used to be pretty good about giving us a news drop in June, and they still could uh, with NAIC, right? Yeah, um, it would technically be June slash 30th. July. Yeah, June thirtieth mm-hmm. or something. So I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised either way. Yeah, either I think way. one thing to also consider with the Regulation D rule set, it ends September first. Or September 30th, excuse me. So that would mean we have no rules for October. So does that mean yes. DLC in September? No, I think which it's would... coming in September, which would be fall, right? So mm-hmm. Yeah, no, this still counts. Would be fall. Right, right, time so I... just right to, if you're going to tease the DLC in September, you drop it in June, July. Yep. Unless we get delays. <clears throat> yep. I don't think it'll. I don't think it'll delay. I don't think they're going to delay it. The Pokemon machine is too big. I do yeah, not think. Yet. I do not see a world where they delay. Where they, I make an announcement for a date and then delay the date. I, Pokemon Home is slightly the exception. Oh, well, no, I'm, but yeah, with the it, if they announce the actual date, yeah, I could see that. But uh, yeah, that's why they announce. We're not, we're that's why yet. they announce like time frames. I think is because when they announce right. the date, like that's the date. That's Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's Pokemon. They. Like, we got first half of 2023 Pokemon Go right at the end, but it was there. Um, I, I do fully expect, though, because it does look like they want both DLCs to drop before the end of the year that we will probably get it in September because they're probably going to want, like, a three-month leeway between the two. Oh, yeah. Because my, September, my, December? Yeah. I expect September, December. Yeah. Because especially... So, okay, if it were me, right, and I was sitting in a PR office... Um, with the way that Pokemon and video games are just like spread around social media and they all become social events for a couple weeks when something new mm-hmm. comes out. If it were me, I would want DLC to drop 
you know, around between Black Friday and, and Christmas. Um, oh, yeah. Because everybody's going to be sharing all their things on social media. Like, hey, look at this cool thing I'm doing uh, in this game. And then people are going to want to buy it. And the holidays are right there. That is my yeah. personal opinion. And I am shocked that they did not do that prior. Mm-hmm. No, I think that's I'm a absolutely smart shocked. Thing. I mean, that's why they, that's why the game releases on Black Friday or the weekend before Black Friday is because all the hype builds right. up right before it. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. So I I don't disagree with that. I like I think that's what they should do, just to drive more sales of Scarlet and Violet. Um, maybe also just make the game run efficiently, but that's a different story. <laughs> uh, all right, then. This has been the news. Uh, it's time for Puckle's Pokey Quiz. So we're going to kick it on over to Puckle's Pokey Quiz, where we're going to quiz your co host on their insane Pokemon knowledge. Oh, hi, and welcome to the Pokey Quiz the part of the show where we quiz our co-hosts on their insane Pokemon knowledge. I'm Mark from the Dunsparce Gang, here to explain the rules. Our fabulous co-hosts will work as a team to answer five Pokemon-themed trivia questions that fans have submitted on the Discord server. Each question is worth one point, with Pokedex and multiple answer questions worth more, for a total of seven points. The host can use a free hint at any time. If they get all the answers correct and do not use the hint, they can cash it in for an eighth point. And welcome to Puckle's Pokey Quiz, the part of the show where we quiz your co-host. Thank you for that introduction, Mark. You gave a wonderful int- introduction there to the rules. Yes. Um, but of course, we're going to go ahead and get you on to some questions. Uh, our first our first question this week is going to come to you from Fraz. Which Pokemon type has the highest percentage of moves with 100% accuracy? So percentage of moves in that type oh gosh this is a semi um, semi convoluted question because it's not hard to really figure out if you, you think about it real hard but like normal maybe like what type has the most percentage moves that are 100 percent? has that right what yeah what what type has the most 100 percent accuracy moves in their type at like as a total percentage of all moves of that type percentage um <sighs> Jeez, it's not rock. It's not flying. No, yeah, I was going to say not rock at all. Um, this is the thing, maybe normal? I'm trying I, to think. Normal has some pretty inaccurate moves. So I think like Mega Kick is one. Oh, yeah, they got You got some, a couple. Okay, like yeah, it's, But true. the fact is there's so many normal moves, it might still have a right. high percentage. Right. Um, ground, that was kind of what I was thinking. Well, ground has a mud slap is not 100. No, no. Not ground. It's got a good chunk of bomb moves and such that don't hit. Water, me? Well, let me think. Not water. It could be water. Well, aside from pump and muddy water. Yeah. There's so many moves. It's like, any- huh? Uh, what? I'm trying to think here. Oof. Um. Yeah. This is. Yeah. I mean, I guess. <laughs> I guess we could go. <laughs> Can we just go we just take a stab at it? Yeah, I think we just go normal. Because I don't normal? have any... Okay. Like, I just can't figure out a good rational other type that's, like, guaranteed all the big moves hit 100%. Right. Because there's yeah, just always let's, a few let's... up moves that was like, well, is it more or less? I don't know. So I, just... I mean, you mentioned normal has it, too, so I guess... Eh, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to um, need an answer here, guys. Let's just go normal. Normal it is. Normal is unfortunately incorrect. Uh, the answer is ghost. Ghost. Okay, really? I was half starting to go that route, the but o- I was still unsure. The only ghost type move with less than one hundred percent accuracy is actually poltergeist. Re- wow. Oh wow! Okay. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every other Didn't ghost type move, one hundred percent accuracy. Well, okay. Yeah. There you go. Fun fact. Smart. Okay. And we are on to our second question today. Our second question is going to come to you guys from Tubins. In Generation 2, whether a Pokemon is shiny or not is determined by its IVs. Which are the only two possible shiny unknown forms in in gold, silver, and crystal? Uh, The unknown forms are also determined by IVs, and I'm not going to lie, this is a little meta. Uh, Oh, jeez. Okay. 
Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Wait, so it's it, meta because that's a joke. It's, what do you mean? Well, okay. I'm just so trying to actually tr- give you free hints. That's all I'm trying to do. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm trying to think about your free hint and see because right. yeah, there's 26 like, letters some... and two of them like and it's which determined two? by the <laughs> IVs. Both things are determined by the IVs. Are you serious? Is it is it really oh, I and V? Is, is it, it really I and V? Is it really I and V? Because <laughs> I was gonna go for the um, I was thinking it might be uh, like the uh, exclamation mark or something like that. Well, those, those are the ones exist. that aren't those in th- Gen two. Yeah, those oh, are like, no, you're those, right. Those were added in you're Gen right. three actually. Oh. Yeah, I forgot about that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wanna just go I and V. Let's go with that, because that just seems that does seem funny. I'm not gonna lie. That's better than yeah. like okay or you know oh, yeah, what yeah, other be, uh, you know, whatever silly like two letter words you could come up something. with. Yeah. The answer is unknown I and unknown V. Uh that is correct. <laughs> like, Those, isn't that silly? Uh that is really silly. Uh all right. Next up is gonna be from Liger. Uh, this is your Pokedex entry question. Its Ultra Sun entry reads, It swims through the ocean at the speed of eight knots, searching for Pokemon that will become its prey. It's especially fond of Wishy-Washy. Who's that Pokemon? Uh, it's fond of Wishy-Washy, huh? Uh, what dex entry is this? This is Ultra Sun. Ultra Sun. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, yeah. So, I'm thinking Gen 7. Uh... What about maybe uh, Sharpedo? Oh, it could be Sharpedo. It could be Sharpedo. Swim, swim fast and eating fish, right? Yeah, it could also be Bruxish, maybe. But I feel like Bruxus is on other stuff. But Bruxus could be an. Yeah, option. I don't know if that's a. I don't know if that's a, a Bruxish entry. Yeah, and I'm um, fine with like Sharpedo. Yeah, we could try Sharpedo. We got two chances here. Yeah. Sharpedo is unfortunately incorrect. Uh, your next Ooh, entry is okay. going to be from Pokemon Ruby, and it reads, This Ooh. Pokemon loves to snooze on bitterly cold ice. The sight of this Pokemon sleeping on a glacier was mistakenly thought to be a mermaid by a mariner long ago. Oh, Dugong? Right? I think so. I think it has to be Dugong, because I don't think it's... Because I'm thinking, like, that's a thing that happens with seals, but of course, I'm like, in my head, I'm like... Maybe Celio, but uh, I feel like Dugong because in Dugong real life Dugongs were mistaken for mermaids, right? Yeah. So that's where my mind goes. Anyways, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like, I go with that. Let's do that. Okay, Dugong. Uh, Dugong is correct. Nice. Uh, that is Dugong. Good job, team. You figured it out. <laughs> um, all right, you guys are two for three. Your next question is going to be worth up to three points for you. Um, there are six answers to this question. I will take. Uh, I will give you one point for each move you can name, um, up to three points. There are six answers. This one is going to be from Wyatt White. What six damaging moves have a one hundred percent chance to crit? One hundred percent chance to crit. Wicked blow. That is correct. Uh, yeah, lock in. Um, bu- 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 always crits. Um, uh, the ice one. Right now. Um, it's not. Wait, the, the ice Frost one. Frost breath. Frost breath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, storm throw. Lock those two Ooh. in. What about surging those strikes? Those are both Doesn't correct. Have a- uh, frost and breath surging and strikes. Throw. Yeah, of course. That surging one strikes as well. Uh, so yeah, you guys got all the yeah. points. There's two more. I'm trying to think what the other two are. I can just give them yeah, to you sure. if you want. Sure. Uh, flower trick, yeah. which just came out. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. And the other one you probably wouldn't get because nobody remembers uh, anything about that game, but Zippy Zap. Oh, right. Oh, Zippy yeah. Zap. Yeah. Probably. yeah. You're right. Nobody remembers that. Yep. All right. This next question is going to come to you from Smeargle19. This is your base deck question, as always. Um, what ground type has the highest base special attack of all ground type Pokemon? Ground type with base, base special, special attack. attack. Yep. Hmm. Of all. Of all. Um. Well, first oh, instinct is Mega Camerupt. Right. Yeah, because I'm seeing this as Megas as well, right? Yep. As always. Okay. So, uh, as always. Um... Yeah, I'm trying to think what other ground because ground types don't have special attack. That's the thing, but there no. but there are a few that do. 
Um, yeah, camera up to the good is probably a good, uh, good one to think about. I think who else right. clicks Earth Power and not anything's the question. I'm trying to think. Uh, I think. Um, I mean, it's not something stupid like Ground Arceus, is it? It's pro- well, you wouldn't say Ground Arceus, but it could technically be Primal Groudon. Oh. As dumb as that sounds, Primal Groudon probably has like 120. I think Mega Crime Rapt is higher, but I mean, it's not like you're talking about, it's probably number two on this list. Oh gosh, yeah, I totally forgot about Primal Groudon. Uh, yeah. But what would that, how, I don't know how those two rank against each other. I would say Cam Rapt has more special attack. Okay. Because I feel like Cam, I mean, Cam Rapt's like, Mega Cam Rapt's like one good, st- uh, like, I think it does have like a 150 stat. And I think it has to be special. Oh, yeah. I don't think it would be. And Primal Groudon is a physical attacker, first and foremost. Okay. Right. So I think special attack is like 120, but like. So do you want to go with. uh, Yeah. I think we go. We just go. We just rock with Mega Camera because I legitimately am trying to figure out anything else that's even close. And I like Landorus is not. It's not Landorus. No. And that's the other Pokemon I can think of that just like, oh, what? click Earth Power instead of Earth, uh, uh, instead of Earthquake. Is there something stupid from this gen? Uh, what do we got this gen? We've got maybe like Sandy Shocks. I don't know what its base stats Ooh, are though. Uh, Sandy Shocks is not a terrible thought. Sandy Shocks might actually be up. number two now that you're saying that one. Um, it's 101 speed. 130 is it, I think it has like 130 ish special attack. It's just between that okay. and Mega Camera. I think Mega Camera up still is like 150 because I don't think it uh, that makes the most sense to me. So we can lock that in if you're if you're yeah, because cool all the other ones are like Claude Sire and you got Claude Sire, you got Great Tusks, you got Iron Treads, uh-huh. and none of those are special yeah. attackers. And you have no. Ting Lu. Yeah, I'm gonna need an answer, guys. Yes, yep. Mega Camera up, Mega Camera up. Uh, is unfortunately incorrect. Uh, the number Whoa, one answer is, is Primal Groudon with 150. <laughs> Mega Camera Up comes in second with 145. <laughs> Dang uh, it! Oh, okay. Uh, ah. Sandy Shocks is in third with 121. Mega <laughs> Garchomp is in fourth with 120. And Landorus Incarnate is in fifth with uh, with a 115. Dang. Was, yeah, there we go. I just That's pretty intense. Karana was a little lower, but no, I, I mean it makes sense. But yeah, dang, that's pretty high. Yeah, it's that pretty is high. Pretty high, actually. And the in fact all is, things it's, considered, it still doesn't click. It clicks, you know, freaking precipitous blades more often than or earthquake yeah. even than yeah. yeah it's not going to go for special moves. Yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. Um, but yeah, uh, you guys ended up with, uh, five points there today in your race to 40. So let's go ahead and add it all in. Uh, let me see here. That does change up our leaderboard though. So we are going to go ahead in, uh, in first place, we have Linian with 29 and second place Claude nine with 28 in third. There's a three-way tie between Wivzicott, Sublime and Shark at 24. Uh, nice. In sixth place, there's a two-way tie between Seth Vilo and Mark with 20. Hey. Uh, in eighth, there is uh, R Sigma with 19. In ninth, there's Jushir with 13. In tenth, there's Basket with 12. And in eleventh, there's uh, Dr. Shamu with five. First to 40 wins it. Uh, nobody's there. All right. On that note, then, guys, we are going to kick it on over to our topic. We have another review. This one is going to be from Spartan THX 117. Five stars, longtime listener. First, and the first time I've ever written a review for a podcast, I first started listening to your podcast when driving to meet my girlfriend on the weekends when neither of us had to work. Since then, we've moved in together and become engaged. The both of us have been playing Pokemon since we were kids, and we have both listened to your podcast when traveling or working around the house together. We may not score too well on the quiz part, but we always enjoy the topics and conversation between the hosts and guests. Keep doing what you're doing. Well, thank you for that, and congrats on the engagement. If you would like your review read on the show, leave one, and it might be read. Until then, guys, we're going to kick it on over to the topic. Welcome to our topic. Our topic today is going to be Pokemon Home, the release for Scarlet and Violet. Yay! Woohoo! How it went and what we think about it. Oh, wow. How it went. I never thought I'd have so many opinions about this. I'm going to be honest. 
Like, I was kind of hoping it would be, like, non-monumental, like it was with Legends Arceus and BDSP. Right, right. But, like, this one is just, like, opened up so many cans of worms. Yeah, start, even starting last week before it actually drops. The, fa- the fake uh, release? When you're talking about the fact that they announced it, and then it's like, ah, just kidding. Oh, I actually, I blame Scarlet and Violet, like, screwing up to, uh, as, like, the reason for that. Because, like, there was an issue with the raids that week on mm-hmm. Scarlet and Violet. And I imagine there was something that was just, like, wrong. And they wanted to make sure everything was cherry on the server. So they gave themselves an extra week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, which, it doesn't look good when you have to, like, fake us out. But I understand. If something's not working, like, double check. Uh, yeah. But I have to say, like... So I'm going to I'm going to be like critical and then like I kind of want to like have a positive opinion at the end um for the for a change of pace I guess um and so one I think it's really awkward like a lot they did a lot of things that I find a little awkward um particularly like on the scarlet and violet side as well um and the biggest one being like you can't evolve stantler or hisuian quillfish yeah or ursaring or scyther into cleavor yeah in scarlet and violet but hold on, hold on. I I think that's okay because they have the backwards compatibility, and I'm to- I'm totally okay with that. I'm now. not entirely against it for that reason. I like that idea more for Pokemon that say like Hisui. Okay, so like the TCG is very revealing about how the Pokemon company views certain Pokemon. Okay, which is kind of it's it's weird, but it's true. So like. Um, if a Pokemon's original in the TCG, there would be like small script and it'll be like Galarian Slowbro or um or like Alolan Meowth, right? It'll say those things. And so they did it with just like a t- in tiny text Alolan. Yeah. And so they do that as well with they did that with the Hisuians as well. Like we got Hisuian Quillfish. Um one that's very telling that I think don't know that a lot of people see is uh the Hisuian Basculin White Stripe. Um, that's one that was also there. Um, so like Basculin and White Stripe is essentially just like Hisui and Basculin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is, uh, the way to treat it, especially for like the Basque Legion. Right. But the ones that don't say that there, it's not Hisui and Ursaluna. It's just Ursaluna. It's not Hisui and Weirdir. It's just Weirdir. It's not Hisui and Cleavor. It's Cleavor. Well, yeah, because they're different. They're different Pokemon. They're not regionals. Yeah. Uh, I, that, that is true. Um, I, but even if you look at Perserker, right? We look at a Berserker card. It says Galarian Berserker. Well, because they're gonna have other regional Berserkers. Duh. <laughs> they're just this is yeah. this is uh they're letting us know in advance. The little uh, Easter egg. That's the thing that I noticed was they would call it Galarian Berserker, right? Yeah, no, it's just because those are coming from the regional because they are evolved directly from a regional form. Except well, Basculin being an asterisk mark. These are just like real Pokemon, though, and I think it's. I mean, I I do agree with the backwards compatibility, which I think is the highlight of like all of this Pokemon Home stuff. In all honesty, it is. They finally started working that through. Like, I just have a minor criticism because I think they should just be able to evolve. And to be fair, um, so I follow a lot of the data miners on Twitter, and I really like it when new things come out like this. Um, there apparently is like an empty block in the code for evolving these Pokemon. Yep, it is evolve like 61 or something to the effect. My assumption is that DLC DLC will fill this in. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm a thousand percent because if you're looking at the Pokemon that can't evolve, those are the ones that were very niche PLA exclusive ways so far, mm-hmm. which would be, right. you know, you're talking about using Barbarage 20 times, to- like Strong Style 20 times, Agile, Psy Bash, you know, Psy Shield Bash 20 times, Pete Block... And uh, uh, Augurite, I guess. Yeah, Black Augurite. I think are the. I think those are actually the ones. That's it. Those are it. I think it's just those four, right? I believe it is just those four, which is just really awkward. It's just really awkward. I'm not that surprised, though. Yeah, I think it's just like it would have been nice to have the other item already in the game, but yeah, I guess they just didn't want them to get in there. Th- th- like they're in the code. Like I think I believe Black Augurite and Pete Block are both in the game code already which makes it even more awkward um i i don't know it like it just feels funny to me especially the thing that really bugs me is that stantler can learn psy shield bash in scarlet and violet it can yeah it totally can but it can't it can't do it agile you know i know i think that's really stupid and they should have just retconned it and they might i mean that just might be what the dlc is like we're just saying you know that's true dude we're in that world now 
We're just, I think they just want to do it right. They want to do it right because they still like, they didn't want to give, like, make a bunch of Hisuian Pokemon available right away. And they, because, you know, it's still technically a past game and they just want to, like, I think they just wanted to kind of keep those just like under wraps just a little bit as they figure out how they're going to do it going forward. So I think as long as the DLC and then beyond it, I'm, I'll be fine. It'll be fine. I do agree with Mark, though. I don't entirely disagree with the because of the backwards compatibility. The backwards compatibility fixes so many issues in my mind. Well, and that allows you to to have a reason to if you want to go send them on back to PLA. It gives a reason, period, to go back to older Pokemon games. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gives you it gives you the ability to go back and get, um, you know, ribbons that you may have missed, which is really what I care about, to be honest. Um, but like it, it's one of those things that, you know, if you can still send it back to evolve, like that's fine. I don't know. I really like it for regionals. Hard stop. Like, I really like it for. Regionals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Because the thing that bugs me a lot, I mean, and this is just Alolan Pokemon in general, like I really am bummed about like Alolan Marowak and Alolan Raichu. Yeah. Yeah. Raichu. For most of that, I believe it's kind of remedied in uh, Pokemon in Pokemon Sc Sword and Shield. Like, because you can just go do like the one for one trades in Sword and Shield for it. Mm hmm. Which is okay. Yeah, but it's not the it's not the same. It's not like you're. It's not the, yeah. No, no, no. I, I would really enjoy if they gave us, maybe not a remake per se, but a, like a DLC where like we go there and there's like the Pokemon evolve into their Alolan forms for some reason and we don't know. Yeah. Or, or just give us like an Alolan stone like they do in Pokemon Go, yeah. like with the Nova stone yeah. and the Sinnoh stone. Just give us something like that, that, you know, infuse it with the power of Alola and Galar or what? Well, like I said, Galar's is fine. Once they fix that, I have zero problem with me not being able to evolve my coughing. Like, let's say coughing makes it into the DLC of Scarlet and Violet. I have no problem with not being able to access, like, have an accessible we Galarian Weezing. If I can just send that coughing back to Galar and just go do it. Right. Like, I have no problem with yeah. that. It, which is also really cool, by the way. I think that's, like, super interesting. So it does make me wonder how, what the longevity of this is. I hope it's forever-ish. Well, I mean, because we're tying it to home and home is on, you know, a specific system, or at least it is right now. No, it's not. It's not, though. It's your phone. It's on your phone, too. Well, yes, but I don't know. I, it just makes me nervous. The server being uh, accessible from multiple points for me makes it go, OK, this is probably more has more longevity. I agree. I think it definitely is going to be the thing going forward. That's the only reason why they would do backwards compatibility. Mm hmm. But, you know, we used to think that way about, you know, another storage system we had access to. Yeah. So I don't know. It, it, it's one of those things. No, I, I think we have reason to be doubtful. Yeah. I, I'm not going to say like I'm optimistic, but I'm very cautiously optimistic that this is what we have going forward. Compare like, yes, we thought that, you know, bank was going to be the one all system. But the fact is, mm -hmm. we have proof of concept here of, yes, mm -hmm. they said this is going to be the end all be all. And here's the proof when now they can they've thrown in backwards compatibility. I also feel a little bit better due to the fact that it also connects to Pokemon Go. That's true. Mm -hmm. Like bank never did that. No, I would feel a little bit better if we got like a few more things like it. What would make me 1,000% feel better is that we get the next whatever it is, Switch, whatever, whatever Nintendo is cooking up. Like, it would make me feel better to see that. And then we go, okay, we're good. Like, that's, this is the next thing. Pokemon Home's on it. It's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Once it transfers to another Nintendo console, I feel very confident. Yeah, I, what, that's that's going to be the thing that I'm going to be looking for is what the next console is. And is, is this going to be available on there? My gut feeling is that it's just going to be a Switch 2, and it's going to honestly almost look exactly like the Switch, but be... 3D Switch. Better. Yeah, I think so. It's just going to be the Switch OLED, but better. I see more of a transition from DS to 3DS in terms... I was just talking to my wife about this this morning. I see a transition more like DS to 3DS coming than a transition from Game Boy to 3DS, if that makes sense. Yeah, we uh, like we to we you or we you to switch you know we you to switch was a hard shut off right like we you to switch but yeah that one yeah that one's a huge shut off i see more like a we to we you or something like that coming because nintendo has this habit of just like building on success and the wii u was just a massive failure because they didn't properly market it in my honest opinion like if you just call it the switch 2 people will understand 
<laughs> if they would have called it the We Too, people would have understood. Mm-hmm. But they they didn't market it well because they the, my reasoning for this is very it's very shallow, but I think makes logical sense. Um, I am a person who's like very obsessed with Joy-Con colors. <laughs> yeah, and they just announced like two new sets of Joy-Con colors coming out on the thirtieth. They did, yeah. And it's just like one the switch is going to be seven in March. Yeah, which is kind of crazy to think about. That's really old hardware. It is. Mm-hmm. The switch is come is is going to hit seven in March. They just came out with Joy-Con colors, you know, a little over six years in. Mm-hmm. Why would you do that? Why would you do, spend the time developing that? It, because you're probably going to come out with another Switch that just uses the Joy-Con again, or another system that uses the Joy-Con again. Uh, they did it with the Wii U. Hopefully. I mean, that'd be great. That'd be great. The Wii U just used the Wiimotes again. That's true. Mm-hmm. You can set up a system that just uses the Joy-Con again. I don't see why not. Like, I, the Switch is such a banger idea, and I couldn't imagine Nintendo trying to move away from the console hybrid console handheld hybrid ever again i think so i think that's at least their niche and i think as long as they can keep improving the the capabilities on like tv and hardware and yeah at this point what they need to do uh, at this point what they need to do and this is this isn't even pokemon talk but at this point what nintendo needs to do is just go ahead and honestly finally enter like the power race if that makes sense um and just make a switch that is mostly compatible with I mean we've seen this come out when like in terms of the Steam Deck, right? We de- like just a handheld console that is just far more powerful. And if anybody can do that, I mean it's far more powerful than the Switch, I should say. I shouldn't say far more powerful like and make it, you know, have a 4080 inside of it or something insane. Um I think Nintendo just needs to get over their fear of trying to play the game that like Microsoft and Sony are playing because they've obviously got the innovation. I think if we could just enhance the execution, it would be better. But yeah, uh, Pokemon Home came out. Yeah. <laughs> brought some new Mons back. So that's fun. Have y'all brought any new Mons into the game yet? I haven't done it yet, mostly because I've been trying. I've been trying to like read and figure things out and I should probably just do it. Right. Like because um, like I, I see everything about like the move transfers and everything and it gets me worried. Uh, but I did. It, it doesn't look that bad. It just feels complicated. It just feels complicated. It's not necessarily complicated. Just something you had to get used to. Um, one thing it took me a minute to get used to was the displays. It has different displays for each game mm. in the actual uh, the phone app, anyways. Really? So like, yeah. So I had my I had a weird ear that I brought over from you know a yeah. Stantler all the way back from Gen Four, and so because I wanted because I thought that would be fun, and so. I looked at it and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just like checking everything out the first day. And I was like, oh, all of the ribbons I have are gone. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. That was something I saw that. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I, I was talking about in general. I was like, where did my ribbons go? And then I was, and then I realized after I was like, oh, I have to like, depending on the game display that you have. Yeah. It will show you different ribbons. It'll show you the different moves that you have set. Yeah. But even that's not actually perfect, I noticed. Um, something about the, the Galar champion ribbon doesn't show up on all of them and it will display as, uh, what was it? It was a different type of ribbon. Um, but anyways, yeah, I thought that was kind of weird. I also think it is kind of weird that they don't show all the rib. I get it, but just not showing all the ribbons. I don't know. It just seems a little weird to just not have that be readily available on the screen. That was just like a different thing there. Uh-huh. They did finally update the, um, uh, the models in the uh, in home as well which i thought was interesting i saw that they made some goofy mistakes though like i think which ones well one the golden go model change from what i heard like both the shiny and the regular one yeah i think they changed the think of a slight coloring thing they had to fix or whatnot yeah they did like some coloring thing i mean i don't know if ilka did that themselves or somebody else did it right mm-hmm. yeah i noticed there were some weird issues with some of the models like rhyhorn had some like voids in it <laughs> so like in gaps in its armor it was just vo- a void and they fixed that um they they made this so there was like a lighting element to it so it looked a little better um it's it's not you know high quality or anything but i think the the models at least in the phone do look better um but i'm not surprised that there's color issues i mean there were color issues before there's some weird weird ones out there um but uh yeah, I mean just the fact that we can have that backwards compatibility, I thought was pretty cool. No, the backwards compatibility I think is huge, right? Like it was very 
so we I, I talk about how like Pokemon Home now is complicated with the moves um, and mm-hmm. a little bit complicated with the moves, but it's actually really uh, crazy to think about in terms of the uh, in terms of like Pokemon Bank, because Pokemon Bank had like weird rules where like you could bring this Pokemon back into Gen 6, but if it's been to Gen 7, it's not happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. That little. There's like no mark for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I completely understand. Yeah, I mean, it just it'll take. It's taken a minute for me to get used to, um, but it is it is very nice to have. Um, I mean, we also have finally the ribbon displayed from uh, from PLA as well. So the one ribbon we have there. Mm-hmm. So, but I noticed you had to you have to bring your mon over into um, SV for it to display. So it has to make that connection first before it'll show up in home, which I thought was interesting. So. You know, it, it is what it is, but we've, uh, I don't know. I think there's, I think I agree with you, Thatch. I think there's a lot to be optimistic about. I was honestly pretty skeptical that about um, it connecting to previous games flawlessly. Uh, so it was nice to see that happen and nice to do it myself. It, it's a complicated process for sure. Like th- there's still some like hiccups. Um, like, I think the biggest one is they're just like really... Uh, they're they're not a big fan of uh, oh my gosh what am I trying to say they uh like the big hiccup that I saw and this is I say big it's not really that big but what they did was they accidentally uh, screwed up uh, how Pokemon this is Ilka's fault probably too um like if you hyper train a Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet you have to level one hundred it before it goes to BDSP or it like freaks out yeah 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 that was something that yeah it's just probably a flag that is in like like. You could like flag for you can hyper train now that you hit level one hundred and ver- and the same flag is used for level one uh fifty and SV and you just like there's something that's just like oh this is a legal mon one hundred percent yeah there's some like legality issues that makes sense to me I know people were freaking out about it but yeah don't forget BDSP had some legality issues to start so uh yeah BDSP has only one thing going for it entirely and that is that it has the most beautiful pedal backgrounds of any pokemon game ever that's where it stops i would say one more thing with bdsp and that is that some of the some of the uh, like when you fight the elite four again that they're actually a little more challenging than normal games that is also fair and you could shiny hunt arceus you can shiny hunt arceus that's right yeah that is true those are like the only big things, just like that make it stand out from anything other. Uh, depending on how you feel, they demythicalized uh, Jirachi and Mew. Oh, that's true. Oh, that's true. They did do that. They did do that. I have mixed opinions on that, but they did it. You have opinion. I have literally no opinions about this. Uh, I think. Well, this is just me being from Gen One, but I feel like Mew should continue to be mythical, even though they give it out at every opportunity. Man, I have like. I just do not care. Like, I think that they should. Uh, <laughs> no, I I think they should demythicalize because I think that I think in modern times, mythical Pokemon are wasted. Um, like, I, I really do. Okay, because mm-hmm. y- you look at like Zarude. Sure. Zarude doesn't need to exist. Like, what are you talking about? We need more Zarudes. Come on. <laughs> like, the really good way to handle mythical Pokemon is the way is to make them not mythical Pokemon and make them just normal legendary Pokemon, but with stories. Uh, like I, the Pokemon I will always use for this example are both Urshifu, um, which is kind of weaker, but the better one is Calyrex. Yeah, no, I think those were handled perfectly, mm. and I think if they did that with other ones, and I think I think it's fine for future game. I I'm fine with it being like the paid DLC of like, oh, you can get Mew only if you have save data from this game. Like that's a at least a final. It makes it still semi hard to get like you can't just like play the game normally you have to have had the other game so at least it kind of like you if like hopefully it's more of like you had the story in those games and then be able to get it like like if they did that in the sv dlc like you could get a you know a cub foo if you had swish data at least that i think i'm okay with that i'm fine with i would have been okay with that i i don't think pokemon like zarude even volcanian the way it was presented just don't need to exist. Deancy, uh, uh, Hoopa. Yeah, I'm just. Oh, yeah, Hoopa. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny that I get more story about Hoopa from freaking Pokemon Masters than I do anything else. You're not wrong, though. Like, it, it's <laughs> mythical Pokemon are just, they're kind of wasted in modern day. And 
I don't know, especially when it's just like, here's a mystery gift to get your Mew. I don't see the problem with BDSP being like, hey, if you played these games, here's these Pokemon um, that are really hard to get otherwise. I, I guess. I Like I said, you know, they, they seem to give away Mew at every opportunity they can. So it's almost like it's not really mythical anyways. I don't know. I don't know if they've done it in a while, in all honesty. Let me look. At, I'm going to. I'm gonna Well, they look. did. They did it like, what was it? Like a pre purchase oh. or was it one or two games you could get a mew yeah okay but they got a lot of flack for okay no it wasn't for games it was uh you got mew you got mew if you bought the pokemon go plus pokeball you got that yeah i remember that i mean you get mew once in pokemon go anyways uh if you play pokemon go and you did the research yes you do the research yeah and you only get it there you don't get it anywhere else like you have to i don't think you can transfer it yeah, I don't, you can't actually transfer it to home. Fun fact. The Mew? Really? Yeah. I don't think so. I'm 90% Are sure. sure I can check it. I'm pretty sure you cannot transfer the I, Mew. I'm going to check this right now because I could have sworn you could. Like, there's a. I thought the only thing you couldn't transfer like the the hat Pokemon and all that stuff, the costumes. No, no, no. There's some random Pokemon that you just like can't. Interesting. Yeah. Let me see here. This is exciting radio here. I'm going to pull this open. <laughs> I know. It's really good radio. I mean, to be fair, I pulled you it open it. too, but it's fine. Uh, <laughs> you actually opened your account. I found it wasn't downloaded on my phone for some reason. Oops. <laughs> yeah. I just had to relink all my Nintendo accounts and everything. It was uh, time. Um, I don't even know how to do this anymore. I haven't <laughs> touched this in a long time. Uh, you go to like settings and connected games. Yeah. And you should find home there. Oh, devices. And oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Playing around with some of the Pokemon in... In Scarlet Violet and seeing some of the, you know, people posting on Twitter, like, little clips. Like, they do, the models do look good. They still look good in SV. They look better. No, Pokemon has been doing a decent job at, like, the models. The problem was they used models as the excuse very early on. Oh, yeah. Like, we're not doing any of these mods. We're not putting all the mods in because we're not, we're, we're working on redoing the models. And then, they, like, they put in the same models. And everybody's just like, what's going on? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's the point? If they would have given us the same excuse for Dexit, I think, and then given us Scarlet and Violet instead of Sword and Shield, I think the blowback would have almost been non-existent. I disagree. I disagree. People would still have been mad about it. People would still be mad about it. I think a much smaller group of people would be mad about it, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm, I think that's optimistic of you. <laughs> I think they would have still been very, there still would have been a very loud vocal part of the, of the, of the community who had been angry. I also think if... Pokemon Home and like the vision that we see for Pokemon Home now existed, I think it would have been better as well if they would have been transparent about the intention. Yeah, like if they had communicated it, like th this is what they're doing with Home, and therefore don't worry, it's not going to be in all games, but we're creating a bigger ecosystem. And yeah, no, I agree. Like if they would have said, hey, we've got bigger visions for how to do it, I think it would have made more sense, right? Like I still have, I still have minor issues with this because there's still like a very small group of Pokemon that just don't have a place on Switch, or once they get into home, they don't have a place, which I do not like. Uh, I really want that to be remedied. Like, I want every Pokemon to have a place on a game that can connect to Pokemon Home. And the the one that I'm mostly worried about is, uh, based on leaks and stuff from that, like that, from the data, is still Furfru. Oh, freaking, yeah, Furfru, please. Furfru is, like, the only one that I'm, like, genuinely concerned doesn't have a spot. Furfru, like, one, I'm not, like, a super big Furfru fan, but, you know, somebody probably is. Yeah. I like its forms. It's kind of, especially if it gets, like, singled out, it kind of feels bad. Mm-hmm. Because I think the only Pokemon missing after, like, the latest, like, look at the data for probably what's in the DLC, uh, I think is, like, the Elemental Monkeys and Furfru. I think that's literally it. Yeah, I think that's the big, those are, like, the big ones. Yeah, those are the most, like, yeah. Oh, uh, Blitzel and Zebstrika. No, Blitzel and Zebstrika are confirmed for DLC. Like, that is actually confirmed by the Pokemon company. Yeah. Oh, confirmed for DLC. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, oh they, I guess the... They are confirmed for Scarlet Violet DLC. Uh, there was, uh, there was a list of Pokemon, uh, that was... So, they kind of did the same thing where they telegraphed for DLC, uh, which Pokemon are gonna be in it because of the, uh, uh, they like empty their dex entries or something. And so we actually know which Pokemon don't have those in Scarlet and Violet. So it, it ends up being like, you know, an additional like 200, 250 Pokemon, which is to be expected. 
which is great. I mean, I have no problems with this. You know, my big thing is I could bring back. So like for me, there's certain mons that are like pretty nostalgic for me, mm-hmm. uh, including like, you know, like when my daughter was first born and I was staying up late with her, you know. Yeah. Uh, doing that and i was playing through the games again some of the games again and i have like these mods from that so they're kind of like you know special i was able to bring some of them back to the game and like actually use them again for the first time in a couple years and like that kind of stuff is just great Mm -hmm. i think pokemon i think pokemon home as a product is a great idea i think the subscription cost is a little high for what it is (sighs) Uh, though this latest update i think is a lot bigger than what a lot of people give it credit for yes because it does like have this move thing that's going on and it, it's introducing the backwards compatibility. So at first when we were waiting for it to come out, I'm like, why is it taking so long? Pokemon Bank, for instance, when it first came out, came out three months after the release, release of X and Y. Or was at least scheduled to come out even mm-hmm. two months after X and Y. You know, after Sun and Moon came out, it was three months later. After uh, And then Pokemon Home took a little bit longer after uh, after Sword and Shield, but it was still like within February, March time frame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it was February because it was in the middle of uh, it was uh, UUTC. We had to change format. Yeah, and so Pokemon Home came out in a reasonable time, and this, and then like the last one was pretty bad. The Pokemon Home compatibility for Legends Arceus and BDSP didn't happen until like June or July, mm-hmm. which was really bad. And this one was looking the same way. And I'm like, what's taking it so long? Like, I don't understand. And looking at this, I I absolutely do because backwards compatibility is like the big thing. Yeah. Being able to move the Pokemon from game to game, allowing again for move reset. I love move reset in Scarlet Violet, by the way, it is it is something I have been waiting for for so long, mostly for competitive Pokemon, because it has allowed such rampant abuse of like Gen 3 exclusive moves Right <laughs> on certain Pokemon. I really enjoy that a lot of like recovery moves got nerfed on PP, so you can't stall mm. as badly. I mean, obviously, they're trying to get people to move away from stall because that's why they killed timer and whatnot. Yeah. Sad. Kill that, kill recovery, and yeah. Sad. Sad. I mean, it's okay because <laughs> I also did not enjoy, like, 40-minute battles, if that makes sense. I like stall. Mm-hmm. I just didn't really like 40-minute battles. It makes my brain hurt, and I don't like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But I do really like not having to be toxic stalled by every Pokemon that's ever existed. I, I really enjoy that. I also enjoy that Scald got removed from a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was a lot of a lot of moves that I noticed. And yeah, Scald was one of them that I was like, when I was redoing my Mons moves, when I was bringing them over, because that was actually pretty time consuming. Yeah. Uh, was was I was like, oh, these moves no longer exist. And then I looked them up and I was like, yep, they don't get them this gen. Yep. <laughs> There's a few that don't. And the and unlike with Swish, where if you had the wrong move, like if you had a move that didn't exist, like Hidden Power, it stayed on your Mon. Yeah, that was awkward. But you just, it literally just says, I can't do anything. Yeah, I can't do anything. It yeah. let some people who are like, you know, I know some people, I watch some like people who do like, you know, fun free for all type like things with their friends on YouTube yeah. and they some one of them would bring like assault vests like uh you know struggle type things and so you could actually because of like hidden power not working you could literally just go choice band struggle just because it's funny <laughs> oh, right <laughs> that's hilarious that's silly yeah because it's like you can't click the moves so therefore you ha- but you still have a move so now you can actually legit just struggle Choice band struggle is hilarious. Mm-hmm. This has been a really interesting move. I kind of like it just because you see this grander plan just forming that they've had for the ecosystem. It softens the blow of Dexit. I, I'm not sure that it's entirely. It does. It's not entirely gone, but the blow has been softened. And I think this is like this is like the uh, the soft landing of Pokemon, right? Like this is what we want the future of Pokemon to be. We want you to be able to take Pokemon and move them around and play all these games and have a really good time with it, right? I do think it's a little nasty that VGC is allowing some of the Pokemon from Legends Arceus in it this this season. Or this upcoming one. It's going to be very interesting, I'm going to say. I'm all for it. I, the thing that just feels icky, again, is that, like, Enamorous is only allowed. Uh, it's only available in PLA. Um, same with like Weird Deer, which probably won't be competitively relevant. I think the big one is Ursa Luna is the big flag. Yeah, Ursa Luna. Yeah, Ursa Luna. That's the, I think, uh, just. That's, that's my only worry is that like you have to go pay for another $60 game if you didn't already do it. 
um, if you're playing legit, right? Which, yes. uh, if you, if you follow Kurt on Twitter, uh, it does not seem to be the case for most top players anyway, but. Uh, yeah, there was some, yeah, there was something, uh, I don't know the specifics, so I'm not gonna comment too much on it, but there was something happening with one of the nationals related to that. I have no clue if that was real or not, but there was some, there was something that, you know, with the top four. Is anyone that surprised though? Somebody got DQ'd, I think. Somebody got DQ'd. I don't remember why. But I thought it was somewhat related to that. I'm not sure. But I definitely know that, yeah, Kurt does tend to give good, go through the look at all those teams and scrubs through them. Yeah, no, uh, Kurt doesn't, and it's really fun. Um, to be fair, there are still like a fair number of legal teams, but those people who do the legal teams, like, more power to you guys. Yeah, good luck getting the zero uh, speed EV Ursaluna. Yeah, the zero speed. Well, that's not that's not hard. Uh, it's not. That's probably not as hard. Actually, that's not as hard. Uh, Cresselia. Cresselia. Cresselia for sure. Because that one's going to be a VGC one. That's going to be a big yep. VGC one just because it's pretty tanky right now. There's not really too much that threatens Cress. And Ursaluna is probably the Pokemon I think pe- that people are fearing the most in VGC. I mean, yeah, you have Landris Therian back and yeah, a few other mo- and like Urshifu and Regieleki, but... Lando got his wings clipped. I don't feel as scared of it. Ursaluna Trick Room is is going to be scary when when like another tanky Pokemon like Glastrier is still two hit KO'd by Fasa- Guts Facade uh, Ursaluna in the snow. Yeah, that's a that's a scary mon. I, I think I got a lot of my feelings out. Maybe not in the most organized way, but I definitely got them out. Yeah. yeah. I'll just add that the move animations, the the old ones, they still look pretty good. Uh, it's definitely different when you have something like Behemoth Bash or like uh, Behemoth Blade where you, back in Swish, where you had the, you know, the full black anim- tr- uh, screen where it looked like a whole cinematic thing. You lose that because of just the nature of SV. But you still can like, a, you still get the cool looking, like, you know, Zama, uh, or Zacian, like, getting up and doing his little slash and the little cuts come through. You still get that, but it just, it definitely doesn't hit the same. It's just something just to, like, you know, that's just, but that's just the way that the game was designed. You just kind of have to accept you lose the cinematics for being able to do open world. Right. Yeah. All right, though. Yeah, I think this is a, I think this is a good place to stop. A lot of Pokemon Home. I mean, Pokemon Home, like, I really like the vision. Keep it going, I guess. And please let me evolve Stantler in Scarlet Violet. Yes, please. get Let them in. Let them work. Let them work. That's literally all I want. That's all I want. Mm-hmm. All right, though. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to kick it on over then to our Pokemon of the episode. We will catch you on the flip-flop. <laughs> episode welcome to our pokemon of the episode our pokemon of the episode this week is national dex 901 ursa luna the pete pokemon it's pokemon legends rcs entry reads i believe it was hisui's swampy terrain that gave ursa luna its burly physique and newfound capacity to manipulate pete at will wow ursa luna is the evolved form of ursa ring and it's also ground normal type which is a unique type to itself yeah, mm-hmm. uh, which is actually pretty cool. It, wait, is it? Uh, I believe so. What other ground yeah. normal type what, what can about, you think of? Um, oh, Diggersby, oh, Rabbit, Diggersby. Diggersby. Yeah. yeah, never yeah. mind. I lied. <laughs> yeah, no, I lied. But unlike Diggersby, this thing has stupidly high bulk, and that's what's making it's it's making a lot of noise so far in both OU and VGC. Yeah, it's, it's very bulky. Probably the best trick room Pokemon. I mean, it is 130 HP, 140 attack, 105 defense, 80 special defense, 45 special attack because it's just optimized to, like, do its thing, and then 50 speed. Like, this thing is insane. Like, 130 HP is huge, especially with that defense stat. Like, that's huge. Even the special defense, which is 80, like, it still is still, like, able to live, like, focus blasts. And it gets good moves. I mean, it gets headlong rush, which is pretty intense. Mm Mm-hmm. It, uh, it gets headlong rush. It gets you know high horsepower. I mean, it, its move pool isn't it's bad. Earthquake, facade, all the pun- all the punches because it's an Ursa ring normally. Yep, right. It's got Swords Dance in its kit. It's not bad. Like its move pool is pretty decent. Play rough. Yeah, there's it's yeah. got coverage for whatever you want it to. Yep, right. but yeah, 
Yeah, I'm, with guts, flame orb, it's gonna just destroy things. Yep. I I'm assuming we'll get a way to evolve it in Scarlet and Violet. Please, for the love of God, please let us do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I really hate the idea that the evolution is gonna be locked to PLA. Uh, I, I only, hope not, only for but... only for convenience sake. Right, yeah, like it's not like I couldn't do it if I didn't want to, but it's just like yeah. just for convenience. I don't want to have to like, I don't want to have to breed the Pokemon on whatever game that I care or breed a Teddy Ursa, then send it to home and then send send it to PLA and then open PLA and then go evolve it and then open up the home and then transfer it to home and then open up Scar and they put it in the Scarlet and Violet and just get it back. Like I, I really I'm literally hate- doing that as we speak. I yeah. literally <laughs> took a I took a shiny from Go. And just oh, dropped no. it into, I dropped it into, I dropped it into SV first because then I EV'd it. Yeah. I dropped all the EVs. I dropped, you know, XP to get it to Ursa Ring. And now I'm just waiting to go get my PLA copy so I could get it to Ursa Luna. And then I could have my shiny Ursa Luna and Scarlet Violet. It, this is definitely making me feel really happy for downloading all of my games onto the Switch. So I don't have to physically swap out all these cartridges. Oh, yeah. No, that's actually a very rational thought there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it makes me very happy in that regard. Mm. But yes, uh, Ursa, we got a team today. It's This is a, uh, what is this? Is this a... Uh, this is a OU, OU team. team. This that, is an OU I have team. used it a little, and it is it is a lot of fun. If you're a fan of Trick Room, this is yes. the team for you. This is very Trick Room heavy. <laughs> it is very Trick Room heavy. Oh, my gosh. Uh, it is on one, two... Three, th- only, only three? Oh, okay, well. Three Trick Room users, but five new home months. So yes, five really- new home months. Yes, uh, Ursa Luna is obviously on the team. Uh, it's holding a flame orb. Uh, it's got guts. It tears into normal, so you can hit even harder, uh, because even though you are full HP, full attack, uh, with your brave nature. Uh, Earthquake, uh, Facade will hit like a truck, uh, <laughs> If you Terra into normal, um, and you also have Fire Punch for coverage, and you have Sword Stance, just in case your uh, base 140 attack stat wasn't doing it for you. Yeah. Uh, Fun fact, this Ursa Luna's Earthquake can still, even Earthquake can still, is a two-hit KO on Great Tusk, which is one of the bigger physical checks oh, wow. in the format, Oh my so. gosh. Go. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, 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 it's stupidly good. Yeah, that is... <laughs> That is actually insane. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will also take this other one down here. Uh, there, there's a King Gambit on this team because it's Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And uh, we've got the ability Supreme Overlord. Uh, it has the Terra type Fire. Um, out of it, Nature. Um, 240 HP, probably because you got 116 speed, probably to outspeed very small things. Yeah, uh, just a few slow things that, Yeah, you know. a few slow things outside of Trick Room. Uh, but then you get mm-hmm. 252 attack. It probably, because I believe King Gamut's got a base 50 speed. Can you correct me if I'm wrong? Yeah, it's, it's uh, 50 speed. So it just outspeeds zero, zero speed, uh, Ursa Luna. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, then, and, uh, you could Koto Cleave, Kauto Cleave, Iron Head, Sucker Punch, and Sword Stance. Yeah, this is usually a good cleaner after yes. you kind of do other things. And then in Trick Room, it'll clean. Outside Trick Room, Sucker Punch is still a thing. And yep. Fire deals with its weaknesses yep all right so i will let somebody take two more of these pokemon all right i will go ahead and take uh, Mag- uh magirna which is one of the first of the trick room users uh it's definitely one of the more common leads you can do but it's still like you don't it doesn't like leading it versus heatran but otherwise it's still like one of the best pokemon in this format right now mm-hmm. uh it is holding a jack pack with the ability Soul Heart, Terra Type Fairy, Max HP, Mass Special Attack, Force Spadef, Quiet Nature, No Attack, or Speed IVs. Uh, it has Floor Cannon, Thunderbolt, Focus Blast, and Trick Room. So Floor, so you usually just like Trick Room and then click Floor Cannon and just eject packed out to pivot into Ursaluna or one of your other Pokemon just to be able to break because Ursaluna can tank kits. Mm -hmm. So that's why it makes it so good. And, you know, you have good coverage with Thunderbolt and Focus Blast otherwise. So, so yeah, that's that. And Magirna is may not last by the time this episode airs. (laughs) At the worst case, I would just swap in like a Hatterene uh, just for the short term. 
just with an ad to fill in this trick room spot, but but otherwise, use this while you can. Use Magirna. It is really good. Uh, mm. The other Pokemon I'll talk about here is one of your other trick room sweepers is Glastrier. Uh, with heavy duty boots, ability chilling nay, uh, terror type electric, max HP, max attack, eight sp attack. Uh, oh, oh, I guess that's one of the, that probably should just be defense because you, it terror blast is funky when you do uh, EVs. Uh, it's a brave nature. Uh, it has swords dance, terror blast, stomping tantrum, icicle crash. This mon is really good in trick room and just like, uh, Bax caliber, you want the you want the bolt beam type coverage you can get out of this. Yeah. Take us home, Mark. Well, next we have Chrysalia with uh mental herb. Got that levitate action, terror type fighting, uh 252 HP, 124 defense, 80 special attack, and 52 speed. Um got that bold nature with some trick room, of course, ice beam, looter dance, and a terror blast for good measure. Uh, so, you know, doing trick room things here as well. Uh, yeah, Secret generally there. you just lunar dance with it because you just need to pivot. You just want to get mm -hmm. Ursa Luna or Glastier in as mm -hmm. often as you can. So you let Ursa Luna tank the first hit, then you bring in Cresselia, then you lunar dance, and then your Ursa Luna's back at full health. Yeah. And finally, last but not least, we got Slow King from Galar with a Suka Berry. Shuka Berry. Um, got Regenerator, of course, uh, Terror Type Water, 252 HP, 252 Defense, and 4 Special Defense with a Relaxed Nature, and um, got Trick Room, Chili Reception, Psychic, and Flamethrower. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, good old Because Galler. Chili Reception is really good because you, it's, because you lose, most Pokemon lose Teleport. This is mm -hmm. a, one of the slow pivoting moves that you get, and... Chili reception with Glastrier making it even more bulky than it is is really good. Yeah. All right. So that is the team. Uh, these will be up for patrons as soon as uh, things are updated on the bot. It's still waiting for the uh, final home updates to come through. My expectation is probably sometime this week. Uh, so please bear with us as we do wait. Um, I plan on giving out a lot of goodies to you guys once it is out. Um, also, if you're even not a patron, watch out. Follow us for uh, our advent calendar in July. <laughs> yeah. uh, Christmas in July. Christmas in July. Shocker. Yeah, it's only because our advent calendar wasn't as fun this year because we didn't have all of the updates to go to uh, Scarlet and Violet quite yet. So I, I am looking forward to the ability to be able to just like give you guys a ton of stuff this July. So definitely look out for that. There will be extra goodies for patrons as well. Um, we'll announce more as the month progresses and I'm not on vacation. So <laughs> look out for that. All right. So with that news, guys, we're going to go ahead and we're going to kick it on over to the mailbag. It's mail time. It's time for the mailbag. Send in your emails. Welcome to the mailbag. The mailbag is the part of the show where you can email us at pucklepodcast at gmail.com and we'll probably read your email on the show. Uh, last week we asked you guys what your Pokemon journey was, a question we had asked before. So we've got that pool of emails. We're going to pull three more out of the bag for that today. But of course, this segment is brought to you by the energy drink Green Tauros, the energy drink that gives you hooves. 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 And we'll give the Green Tauros badge to anybody we deem worthy. But we've got a few Pokemon journeys for you guys today, and our first one is going to come to you from Tucro. Tucro. Hello, Puckle Crew. As someone who bought Pokemon Blue when it first came out, my Pokemon journey, uh, my journey with Pokemon is extensive. Here's my part bullet points. I'm not sh sure how I first discovered Pokemon was a thing, as I played the game first and watched the anime second. All I remember is I was hooked right away, and Yellow was the first video game I ever saved up for. Every time after that, I would buy each new game as they came out, including both versions of each generation. Why buy, why buy both? One version as my primary game, and the other to keep resetting whatever I wanted to replay that generation. I have the same thing. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I don't disagree. I definitely did that as I had money. <laughs> uh, Gen 3 became my favorite generation because of the changes and additions that advanced the game's mechanics. 
I think I spent more time in my original Sapphire than I did any other version. Sometime around Gen 6, I started playing a little less because replaying the same game over and over again was getting stale. However, I then discovered how to randomize games, and suddenly the old felt so new. Since then, I only play randomizers of older games and someday plan to learn to randomize Switch games. I started collecting the trading cards right away, but being a kid, I could never keep up with the expansions and quit. After I started listening to Puckle, the talk of TCNG inspired me to finish collecting the first three sets. I'm done with base one. Oh. Almost done with jungle and fossil. Just a few more to go. Oh, nice. That's not cheap. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Take care, 2 Crow 48. Sweet. So I've been like buying some old TCG cards for a cube so that whenever we all get together again, uh, we can play it and even like Mark would be able to feel nostalgia. Yeah. I know these cards. <laughs> yeah, the cube I'm building is the first four sets of the TCG. So it's base set, uh, fossil, jungle, and rocket. And buying the cards has been kind of an insane journey for it. Um, the reason you play rocket is so you can still have Charizard, but not have to buy like the stupid Charizard. Uh -huh. That's like a bajillion dollars. Which is still somehow worth a lot of money. So you can play Dark Charizard instead. But it's, uh, man, those cards, some of those cards aren't cheap. Like just buying the ride shoes I needed. It was like 25 bucks a Raichu. The the Jolteons were like 25 bucks a piece. It's been a journey. Like, I've just been slowly buying it. Um, And I think I'm just about done. I think there's like a few cards I need. Oh, nice. Like, maybe two or three. And then it's ready to go. And I'll test it out with some friends here. And then next time Puckle people get together, we're going to we're gonna cube it up. Nice. Like, if we would have... If I would have had that cube ready, like, when we went to Arlington and we had, like, Shark, Shamu, and Seth and I, we would have just done it then. Oh, yeah. No, a thousand percent. It, it, was, it was... It's a good time. Uh, but yeah, yeah. No, thank you for that, uh, two crow. Our next one is going to come to us from Tobin's Howdy Puckle fans. Uh, Tobin's here. I've been listening for a few years, and I have posted a couple times with the trivia section of Discord. But this is my first email. I've been wanting to write in for a while, and thought this topic was the perfect opportunity. Like many American kids, I was engulfed by the Pokemania of the late '90s. I do remember that the Pokemania was the best. When Pokemon made its way to the States, I was in kindergarten, so I don't remember my first exact encounter with the franchise. However, I do re know that my first game was Pokemon Blue. I also distinctly remember the first card I owned as a Weepin' Bell from Jungle that I got as a kid at church camp, which I still have to this day and it, it, in all of its crumpled glory. Nice. During my childhood, I dove headfirst into the video games, cards, and anime. I was all in. Even my eighth birthday was entirely Pokemon-themed, presents and all. One of my prized possessions as a kid was my Psyduck plush. He got so beat up from me taking him everywhere that one of his eyes fell off and we had to do surgery with a hot glue gun. <laughs> <laughs> Something about the franchise gripped me in an unexplainable way. Uh, Gen 3 was peak Pokemon in my life. The video games were my main focus. I had virtually every mainline and spinoff game at the time, including Pokemon Box, Ruby, and Sapphire, which I still kick myself for selling, as you should. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So there's a there's a video game store down the street from my house um, called Vacuums and Video Games. Um, and uh, they it's mostly video games now, but they still do like vacuum cleaner repair. Very weird. Um, and uh, I went down there though the other day just to like see uh, if, what they had. Like I was just curious. I like walked in the door and man one, they actually are doing a lot of video game business. Um, uh, they're starting to get in the cards as well. So like I could buy some singles there that I need. Not a lot of them, but some. Um, and they have a copy of Pokemon Box, Ruby and Sapphire. Uh, but it's just sitting there because I don't know who is going to walk over there and be like, here's $2,000. Um, it One day, maybe I'll own a copy of Pokemon Box, Ruby and Sapphire. Maybe one day. One day. One day. Uh, but not right now. Mm -hmm. I have fond memories of scaling Mount Battle in the Ore games, attempting the Battle Frontier in Emerald, and even messing around on the tech demo that is Pokemon Channel. Uh, to this day, Pokemon Emerald is one of my favorite and most played games. I am actually currently playing an enhanced version, which is called Pokemon Revelation, in order to beat the Re Battle Frontier. It's a ROM hack that includes a multitude of quality of life features that has made it even more enjoyable playing Gen 3. I will have to look into that. I've been meaning to get, like, an R4 cart so I can play, like, Gen 3 ROM hacks on, like, a physical console. Um, so I definitely want to... Th maybe I'll try that out. Maybe this will be the motivation. Um... I played Gen 4, but shortly after I went through the phase, TM. <laughs> you know, the one where Pokemon isn't cool anymore, and that many of us, barring Thatch, I don't know if I appreciate that call-out or not, um, went through in our te teen years. 
So all the way from eighth grade through my master's degree, I was completely in the dark on the Pokemon world. I completely skipped gens five through seven. The summer after I completed my master's, a random wave of nostalgia hit me. I had the sudden urge to see what happened in Pokemon since I left. I was pleasantly surprised to see such amazing enhancements in the game, such as Fairy Type and Mega Evolution. I went out and immediately bought Y, Alpha Sapphire, and Ultra Moon. Playing those games, I had the same feelings of joy as I did when I first discovered Pokemon. At the end of that summer, I discovered Puckle. Interestingly, I had just moved to Columbus, Ohio, and to start my doctorate degree at Ohio State. Oh. Oh, hey, I did that. <laughs> it was so cool to find a community of people so passionate and knowledgeable about Pokemon. I've been a weekly listener ever since. I especially enjoyed following the hype uh, the hype seasons of Swish, PLA, and SV with y'all. Uh, thank you for being so committed to this podcast and the community as a whole. I hope to engage more with the community in the future, and I will certainly keep listening. Best, Tubins. I was just at Ohio State the other week <laughs> for work. So, <laughs> wow. Thank you for that one, Tubins. Um, all right. This next one is going to be, and our last one, is going to be from EV. Uh, Mark, you've got this one. Yeah. So Evie says, hey, Puckle people, the real Evie here. I'm digging everyone's uh, Pokemon journeys I've heard so far. It's so amazing to hear that we've had these great experiences. Pokemon has been a constant in my life from uh, from me starting my Pokemon journey to my teaching to me teaching my younger brothers how to uh, and how, now my children how to play Pokemon. It has been a constant thing in my life. One of the thing, favorite things I've tried to do with Pokemon was collect all the toys so I can use them as avatars for the cards. <laughs> <laughs> so I can feel like I'm having a real-life Pokemon battle when I go to play TCG as a young child. Okay, but that's cool. That's cool. That That is fun. I like He that. had the Yu-Gi-Oh! dream, but for Pokemon. Yeah. I really miss the days that we uh, would get all, get all these weird, obscure Pokemon products like a couple people have mentioned before. Uh, the Jelly Jar uh, is... It, Actually, that was actually the best, and I wish mine hadn't been lost to me. Um, another thing I want to bring up about my Pokemon journey is everyone in public, Puckle writing into the podcast, hanging out with people on streams, and just having a community to come uh, to for so many years now. Uh, if it wasn't for Pokemon, none of us would be here, and uh, with these amazing friendships and bonds that we've made throughout the years. So, well, well, guys, I'm going to get back to the Unite grind, <laughs> your least favorite evolution. The real, the real EV signing out. <laughs> well, thank you for that. All right, I always love reading these because there's so many good stories. Oh yeah, yep. But yeah, all right. Uh, I want to give Tubins the badge if you guys don't mind. I agree. Yeah, that works. Tubins. Yeah. Let's go with Tubins. You get it. You get the Green Taurus badge. If I can't find you, somebody will. And yay! If not, message one of us. Just ask. All right. On that note, though, if you want to email us next week, you can email us letting us know what you think of the Pokemon Home release. Uh, do you like the vision that we have for Pokemon Go now? Um, let us know at uh, pokopodcast at gmail.com. Uh, but if you want to keep up with us throughout the week, the best way to do so is go to our uh, our Discord at pucklediscord.com. Chill, hang out. You have a good time. Additionally, you can go ahead and uh, follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. You can go ahead and also follow us uh, on YouTube at youtube.com slash Puckle Podcast, where Sigma's been putting up some videos. Uh, I also need to get back to streaming, which probably won't happen until July, honestly, because I have to go on vacation next weekend. We'll have to definitely consider that. Additionally, we have to, uh, you can always uh, help support the show in a couple ways. One, you can go over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Puckle Podcast. We will be giving away Pokemon once again, once the uh, bot is updated. Uh, we will also go ahead and, uh, we we uh, also have our coupon code if you are buying TCG products over at Troll and Toad. Uh, you can use code PUCKLEPOD5 at checkout um, to get 5% off your order, and we get a kickback as well. So we really appreciate everybody who's used the code so far. Um, we really appreciate the support. Um, all right then, guys. Uh, that means it's all for today. So I have been Trainer Thatch. I'm Mark. I'm Shark Finnegan. And here in the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's closing time. Yeah.